Hillary's a granny with a twinkle in her eye. <laughs> Hillary's a granny and she makes an apple pie. First female president, first female president, me, 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 me. <laughs> Oh, hey, great, Mrs. Okay. Clinton. Okay, now hold up your phone, mm -hmm, and you can mm -hmm. just look natural, oh, okay? Okay. okay. <laughs> and, and maybe you want to soften a little? Okay, a, a little more? Okay, um, may, maybe a lot more? Great. Great, okay, and action. Citizens, you will elect me. I will be your leader. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you remember that from a couple of weeks ago on Saturday Night Live. Joining us is Matt Kate Lewis, senior contributor to The Daily Caller, contributing editor to The Week. Matt, uh, great uh, to have you back and a great piece um, about uh, how satire might do in Hillary more so than uh, scandal, and I might add legitimate scandal. Um, this was amazing stuff on Saturday Night Live. That woman has her down to a T. But how do you think that that's going to uh, really uh, affect anything? Well, look, I think it depends if it's a if it's a drumbeat of satire and mockery or if it's a one time thing. And presumably Saturday Night Live will continue to go with these these skits because I think they're funny and I think they work and I think they are harming. You know, sometimes these things hurt. I think they really hurt Sarah Palin. Sometimes they don't. I don't think the mockery of Bill Clinton or even George W. Bush on SNL hurt them. But keep in mind, it's not just Saturday Night Live, it's the entire world now. You know, we saw the, the week-long uh, debacle of what was Hillary's rollout with her not leaving a tip at Chipotle, going really uh, overshadowing a lot of other important stories. So I think Hillary may be in for uh, some mockery. And as Saul Alinsky, the famous leftist organizer, said, and I think that mockery is an you know, an, a very potent and probably underestimated weapon in politics. And it's uh, very ironic in a way that you bring up Saul Alinsky, of course, who, if I have my facts straight, uh, actually, you know, we, we talk about the relationship between or the influence Saul Alinsky had in Obama. Uh, Saul Alinsky actually offered Hillary an internship. I think that's true. I also think that she wrote like her senior thesis on him or something. Yeah, I mean, this guy, if, if you haven't read the book Rules for Radicals, everyone should read it or at least be aware of it. He wrote this primer that was a guide to a generation of, of leftists, uh, how to be effective organizers, how to use politics. And it really influenced Obama and even more so Hillary Clinton. All right. So, so let's talk about um, the, the, the satire. And, and I, I agree with you. Uh, it certainly did a number on Sarah Palin. Um, because it, it, it especially it, it misrepresented what she said and, and what she did and made her look like a, an idiot. Um, we'll see how far this goes and how far the left is willing to take it, uh, places like Saturday Night Live and others. Uh, but it's, let's, go, let's, let's concentrate on the scandal for a second here. Uh, you know, they're already coming out and trashing the messenger on this uh, book, uh, Peter Schweitzer's book that's coming out in a week or so. Um, the, the usual suspects are, are trashing the messenger. And I think we, we can't afford to get caught up in, in finding a quid pro quo or proof of a quid pro quo. I don't think Hillary's that stupid uh, or Bill's that stupid. It might look bad, smell bad, but they might not be evidence. But, I, I mean, just uh, tell me if I'm wrong here, Matt. I mean, if you're president of the United States, can you take contributions to your foundation from a— I mean, you've got to put all your money in a trust that, that she was secretary of state and took money from foreign governments and is still taking money from foreign governments. My God, I can't imagine how someone like that could even run for president. It's, it's audacious, it's unbelievable, and as I argue in that piece in The Telegraph, I think it probably matters less than the fact that she might become a joke. I, I think there is the death of outrage when it comes to very serious scandals, and I think you're right. You know, I, some conservatives, I think, are I think they're naive if they think this new book is going to bring her down or some smoking gun is going to emerge. I mean, look, we know that she deleted all of these emails. It was a big deal for a week or so, and people have moved on. I mean, it's baked into the cake. Everybody knows that the Clintons are, at best, unseemly. And you either like them or you don't. But the notion that there's going to be a smoking gun that will all of a sudden awaken the American public and they will realize that the Clintons are 
uh, you know, what, whatever, uh, un unseemly is the polite way of putting it. I, <laughs> I'm skeptical. Yeah, well, I, I, you got to be a little bit uh, skeptical, and I, and, and I think that that's a, that's a, a very um, dangerous road for the uh, Republicans to, to be pinning their hopes on, uh, on this book. And I, I don't think that too many are, but I think they're, they're you know, but Rand Paul, for one, is kind of uh, uh, trumpeting the arrival of this book unless he knows something that, that we actually do not know. Um, Matt, I, I, let, me, let me just ask you real quick here. Uh, Larry Kudlow, who's on the show today, uh, said that Republicans need to stop what he called their snarky um, attacks on uh, and the trashing of Hillary because it's not appealing to minorities and women. Do you, he said, let her hang herself. Do you agree? Well, I think that, you know, there's a distinction who's a Republican. I, I, I think that, you know, political candidates, the way they behave, the demeanor, they have to be very careful uh, how they talk about Hillary Clinton and the way that they approach her. However, I think when it comes to blogs, when it comes to oh, uh, yeah. analysts, when it comes to the media, that's a different ball game. Um, yeah, he was so, talking about the candidates, uh, the ones who were just at that latest uh, foray where a bunch of them gathered. I think that's what he was talking about. Hey, Matt, great work as always. Read Matt at the uh, Daily Caller and The Week and wherever else is a piece of show up, like the uh, D Daily Telegraph. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, folks, up next, Ed and Christopher Lucas. I've known Ed Lucas for decades. He's a blind journalist, covers baseball, knows more about it than anybody. He'll be here.